Let's go downstairs. Let's go. Do you want to go outside? It's not very nice out there though. Ugh. What do you think? Do you want to go out? Or not? Yeah. Good morning guys, I can finally actually talk to you. I'm in the process of curling my hair right now and I look like death warmed up. I don't know what has happened since I got pregnant. I feel like my skin and my face just looks horrendous, so dull and like it just doesn't look good. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to be doing a review today of the True Skin from Catrice. It's their newest foundation that they brought out and the kind people over Catrice sent it over to me. The shade that they sent was Warm Vanilla so I'm hoping it matches. I'm going to do that review today because I posted about it on my Instagram yesterday. I am going to do a Q&A in this vlog as well later on today. I just put up a question like a thing on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram guys I'll leave like my handle somewhere here that you can follow me. Um, I really appreciate you guys following me over there it's so great and I can kind of instantly DM you back. I think the last time I did a Q&A was about two years ago guys like seriously it's been so long since I've done a Q&A so I thought today that I might do a little Q&A for you guys and some questions that you have about the pregnancy and I've seen I just had a little quick look there as well other questions just relating to general day-to-day -day things and um, advice and there seems to be like a lot of good questions in there. So there's been two major questions I've been getting tons and tons of lately and I think it's just because obviously I've announced like my pregnancy and the one question I've been getting a lot of is dealing with a, a long-term breakup and how to get over, not get over it but like move on and then have a relationship with somebody else. As you guys may or may not know, I was in a long-term relationship for nine years. Then we broke up three years ago. And obviously I'm with Patty nearly, would be two years together by the time the baby's born. So a lot of people have been asking me, dealing with the breakup, moving on from somebody. And I have great advice. And I really, really want to do like a proper video on that because... I think even at this stage, I can give you the advice from beginning to present. Whereas I think if I filmed this video even last year, I wouldn't have as much even information to give you. I know that sounds like really strange, but I just have a lot of information that I want to kind of give you. And if I could go back and speak to myself this time three years ago, what I would say to myself, because um, I would definitely feel a lot different three years ago if I knew the future but sure that's everybody so I will do a whole video on that the next question that I get so much on is where did Patty and I meet and how did we meet and I think that just kind of came about because I wasn't on the lookout for somebody and he just came into my life and I think that's kind of like one of the best ways to meet somebody so I think Patty and I will tell you that story we're going to do a vlog early in December you guys have already been asking me I've been getting other questions um about vlogmas I am going to do vlogmas this year as much as I can but obviously I'm still working full time so it is kind of hard for me to vlog every single day but I'll dip in and out and try and do vlogmas as best as I possibly can so the question about Patty and I and how we met I think the two of us are going to sit down and do like a little Q&A and we can tell you that story. So just bear with me on those two kind of major questions that I've been getting. I read the most saddest message, I'd say about two weeks ago now. And the girl that wrote to me, um, she knows who she is because she said she watches my vlogs and videos as well. And I just felt the pain from her and I just know exactly how she felt. She's after going through a breakup, I think she said she was with them five years or seven years, something like that. I'm not sure it was like between five and seven years and they had just split up I think she said in August so I can't remember I'll have to go back and read the actual message all again because I did I was writing back and forth to her but um, I've been getting so many messages since it's just very hard to kind of keep up to date but her message stood out to me so much I just 
I can I can relate to the pain that she's in and I know exactly how she's feeling right now and my heart was absolutely breaking for her and I just wished that at that moment I could tell her look things get so much better you know even when you're single things get so much better after a breakup you just get to that phase in your or stage where you're kind of over the whole thing you've dealt with it all you've moved on and you are just happy being you whether you're on your own or with someone else and usually when you're the happiest on your own is when the person that you're supposed to be with walks into your life because that's exactly what happened for me so i'm rambling now guys i will do a more in-depth video on that so i've just finished applying the foundation and I really like it and I just think it looks so nice on my skin and I'm super impressed. So I'm going to sit down now and I'm going to answer all the questions that you guys sent me. Well, not all of them, as many as I possibly can. I've seen some repeat ones and definitely some like I was talking about earlier, just about like Patty and I, um, I have an itchy nose. Patty and I, how we met and like our living situations and what way we're going to be living in the future. So um, I kind of talked about that in my last video, my... 12 week update and Patty and I are actually looking for a house but we've put it on hold because if you've ever house hunted it's very stressful it's not a, like a, not that it's not a pleasant experience obviously it's lovely but during covid virtual tours it's not fun and then also the whole added pressure of being pregnant and stuff like that my home is so lovely and it's very comfortable and my parents are smashers like I cannot commend them enough I am blessed with my parents so I will be staying here when I have the baby so that's just to answer that first question and we're going to continue to keep looking for our house obviously Paddy and I want to live together it's not the plan that I live at home and he stays with me and then you know it, that's not the plan we we want our own our own home but for the first little while or until we find our home the baby's going to be staying with me and also Paddy will be here too so it's not like he's not going to be with me he's going to be in my home so that's like one of the most reoccurring questions now I'm going to go randomly through them and see what you guys are asking super excited to go through all these questions guys there's so many I just can't wait to answer them okay so we're sitting on the floor I'm quite comfy sitting cross-legged I'm going to answer some of the questions actually that's let's sit this way that's a bit better so i'm going to answer some of the questions now thank you so much guys actually by the way for asking these questions the first person i have a question from is olga skelly and she asks are you going to do hypno birthing one of my closest friends neve just had a baby like i'd say when did she have senin? May. So her experience with hypnobirthing was really, really positive. I just loved the whole sound of it. So it seemed to like relate to something I would be into, especially since I'm really into law of attraction, meditating and breathing exercises and work like that. So I really think that hypnobirthing is definitely for me. So I need to look into it. So obviously I'm still kind of early in my pregnancy to kind of be worrying about birth, but it is something I'm going to be thinking about after Christmas. So I will be looking into it then, but just between now and Christmas, I'm I'm going to look into different alternatives. And if that's what I want to go with, I'm going to definitely buy the program. I think you do. And I'm going to follow that. Jennifer Dawn, you don't have to reveal, but do you have names picked out? I'm so happy for you. Thank you so much. We have names picked out for girls definitely I have two that we are pretty set on and Patty and I both each of us picked one and the other one loved it so we have two names picked out one of them I have had since I was probably a small child so I've had my baby name for a very long time and the name he picked out I was like that's beautiful I really like that so yeah we do for girls for boys we're struggling I have a lot of boy names that Patty doesn't like and I mean these are names that I absolutely love these are my boy names and he doesn't like them so I'm a little bit devo.com over it but we're working on it so yes I do I will talk about names I have videos planned coming up I want to do an Irish baby names video you know that already and then I also want to do names that we love but we're not using once we kind of narrow it down to like our top two names so I can already do that with the girls the boys I don't know yet because Paddy doesn't like anything and every day I like he said I'm gonna set a challenge to myself that every day this month I'm gonna give you a name so he's done that for the last like few days and I've kind of like vetoed every single name so I don't know we're not agreeing on the boys the next question is from Zara Boxall and she asks are you going to find out the gender I talked about this in my last video as well no we're not until the baby's born and I explain why in that video Shannon Hegarty 
asked, am I nervous about giving birth? No, I'm not nervous at all about giving birth. The thing that I'm the most nervous about actually is the after the birth. So once I'm with the baby in the hospital, I'm worried about the aftercare with COVID in particular. One of my friends didn't have a great experience with having birth, giving birth and her experience after the baby was born. One of my other friends had a great experience and this is all during COVID. So that kind of scares me a little bit because even though the giving birth is out of my control, I know there's someone there to help me, nothing will ever happen to me or the baby. I'm not worried about that, it's just the after care kind of, again, I know nothing's gonna happen to me or the baby, but like, you're an emotional wreck and you're on your own, you've no visitors, it's gonna be a tough time. So that is what I'm most nervous about. Carmel Anne asked me, did you worry about miscarriage, ectopic, general early pregnancy anxiety? To be honest, I had a little bit of anxiety before my first scan, my private scan that Patty and I went to, I think I was 10 weeks and four days or something. So I had general like a little bit of anxiety. Friends of mine have lost babies, they've had miscarriages. So it, of course it's something that crosses your mind. I didn't think too much about it because I've never been through a miscarriage before. But I could imagine at no matter what stage your pregnancy, having a miscarriage is just horrific. Like it could, I couldn't imagine how it would feel. Similar with an ectopic pregnancy. If you're not sure, ectopic means the baby is forming outside of the uterus. So it doesn't necessarily have to be in the fallopian tube, but that is probably the most common area. And it's just, it's a non-viable pregnancy basically. I wasn't really worried about ectopic pregnancy. Definitely it crossed my mind about miscarriage, but then of course the science side of me kicks in. Being a scientist, I'm like, well, if that pregnancy didn't, if I miscarried, it wasn't a viable pregnancy. That doesn't come into account when it comes to your emotions. Like it just doesn't, like science versus your emotions. They're completely two different things. You can rationalize it all you want in your head, but how you actually feel is completely different. So I think that it was just a thing that crossed my mind, but then I knew what's the point in stressing in it because, or stressing over it because if it was something to, was to happen it's completely out of my control and if it didn't happen then I'm stressing myself out and worrying for nothing. But it does of course every woman fears it and every woman worries about it and every woman thinks about it when they find out that they're pregnant. It's a common a common anxiety. Did you feel nervous about telling people the news? My partner and I just got our mortgage approval and we're together about the same amount of time. We're adults and know what we want. Congratulations. No, I didn't feel nervous at all. I couldn't care less what people think in that regards. And I knew that the people in my life love me so much, like my friends and family. I, I'm blessed with my friends. I have a, a nice group of friends. I have between, I'll say between eight and 10, very, very close friends. And like, obviously you have your best friends and you have your friends that you go to for different things. But I have had those friends well over 10 years and, um, each and every single one of them was delighted over the moon, so happy. And I think that I'm just blessed with the people in my life. I never would have been worried because it's nothing to do with anybody else. Like if anybody had any concerns or anybody had any like comments to make, what's it to them? Like it's nothing to do with them. It's, it's my body, my baby and Paddy's baby. So it's nothing to do with anybody else and what way they think. Um, my parents were over the moon and so were Paddy's parents and we told them almost immediately. Uh, well, I told my parents like the second I found out and we told Paddy's parents the second he found out. Everyone was delighted and I wouldn't be worried anyway. Maeve asked me, does your partner feel left out, not been able to attend scans? I think at the beginning he kind of did and he was really upset, but now like everything's happening in my body and he's with me a lot of the time. Like, we've decided to spend lockdown together. So he's, he's okay, he feels, fine now like because obviously I'm bringing him along step by step. Haberg 98 asks how is the dog doing? Chewy's great. Chewy's fabulous. He's you know same old Chewy. Chewy's a very clingy little doggy so he's like following me around and following mum around and he sleeps with me most nights so he's great. So Sarah O'Bear asks will I be doing vlogmas this year? I answered that earlier on actually in the video without knowing but yes I am doing vlogmas of course. There's so many how did you meet Patty questions here. So again we'll talk about that later. A lot of people want to know my age as well like there's multiple ones. I'm, I'm 30. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that before. Have I? I have to have mentioned my age before at some stage. I don't really think about my age. I never really kind of worry about it. It wasn't really a concern of mine ever. So yeah, I'm 30. Amy190 asks, how did you feel when you found out you're expecting? I'm five weeks and the tiredness is a whole other level. Amy, I would recommend for you to go and watch my 
update of my first semester, or first semester, do you hear me? Do you think I'm in college? My first trimester and I explain everything in that and it might be helpful to you. I go through all my symptoms week by week. At five weeks I was actually tired but I didn't know why I was tired. I just thought it was from like driving around or just driving and working late and working and driving and I just thought that's what it was but it was actually because I was pregnant. So Maddie Triple 195 says that she's overwhelmed with college, any help would be great or advice and I hope you and the baby are well. College is a tough one. <laughs> I know what it feels like. I was one of those people who was in college at least 35 hours a week. I didn't have like a college experience where people were like, oh, I just dipped in and out and you know, my lectures are great. I had labs because I did a science, obviously I have a science degree. So I did a lot, a lot of um, late night labs. The only thing I will say to you is to rest properly it's not good if you're trying to study and do stuff and partying at the same time it's not going to happen like you just can't burn the candle at both ends is that the saying yeah i think that's the same you can't burn the midnight oils maybe as well but you need to take proper rest keep your weekends for resting i know that sounds so lame but i had to do it until like midterms when i had like a little bit of time maybe to spend with friends or whatever but that's just the way my year, my years were in college. I had four years like that. Of course, I spent loads of time going on nights out and things like that. But my year, what my weeks were pretty jam packed. Try not to get overwhelmed. Write down everything that you need to do and break it down. Like, what can you do first? Um, you know, maybe get the easier stuff out of the way or harder stuff, whatever way you work. And then try and break it all down. Like, you'll actually fi find that you don't actually have that much. You're just overwhelmed because it just seems like there's so much. Make schedules and just make sure that you hand assignments and things in on time and make sure you put like things up on your calendar like when things are due or into your phone so that you don't miss deadlines and stuff. That's all I would say. So Nelly HM asks if I have any fertility tips. I'm probably not the best person to kind of go to for fertility tips because I'm going to come from a nutritional point of view. I'm not going to come from a doctor's point of view because I'm sure they can tell you different things. But coming from a nutritional point of view, I would definitely say to cut out rubbish in your diet, saturated fats, too much sugar, too much salt, get rid of them, make sure your diet is a lot cleaner, lots of wholesome foods, vegetables, fruit, anything fresh, try and go for unprocessed foods where possible, try and reduce the amount of refined foods you have in your diet, include whole grain where possible, try and eat fish twice a week, try and make sure you have an awful lot of leafy green veg, that's like my one kind of thing would be leafy green because it's full of folic acid naturally and it's just really good for you. Make sure that you get in a little bit of exercise as well, keep meat lean if you're eating it, if you don't eat meat make sure that you're replacing your B12 maybe you need a supplement or something like that and just make sure that you're eating little and often and like I said reduce the saturated fat reduce the refined foods cut out anything with too much sugar in it too much salt too much fat fertility is a very personalized thing getting into it in your in in Inside your body it's not something that some people have done in their life it's not something that people are born with it can be environmental it can be it can be a mental thing as well I know that people I have watched online have struggled with fertility problems because it was something they were overthinking about and getting pregnant was consuming them and they found it harder to conceive because it was becoming a chore almost. For myself personally I always worried that when the time would come if I wanted to have a baby that I would struggle that it would be very difficult for me or anything like that but I don't know if you guys know this but Paddy is a twin and his parents had IVF to have his brothers um, and himself and they are all perfect and there's you know there is other options if your natural fertility fertility is not working but I would definitely say clean up your diet where possible and get exercise is like the number one thing number one thing I know like I've spoken about this before but I probably never went into too much detail like you guys know I've suffered from an eating disorder it was restrictive eating um I don't want to go into too much detail on it because it can be quite triggering for anybody especially someone going through it and I I know it's not really it's not a good time in my life I want to kind of go back to. Something I've suffered from since I was 11. It's not something that I developed overnight. It just kind of has been with me all my life. I've never not known what it's like not to feel like this with regards to food. But when I had um, problems with my periods and they had stopped, my doctor had said to me, if you don't start 
including foods in your diet again you may do reversible irreversible damage to your fertility and she only said that to me nearly nearly three years ago so it's not even that long ago so I would say to make sure that your diet is the best that it possibly can be that you are the healthiest that you are if you need to lose weight try and lose weight and if you are not exercising get out and do it that is all I can advise in regards to fertility coming from my specialty and my kind of area of expertise but I'm sure doctors would definitely recommend other things so Sophia mummy of two asks oh what well, she says I'm beautiful and I feel like I've grown up with you are you nervous about being a first-time mom first of all that comment is so lovely thank you so much I'm a nervous about being a first-time mom I'm nervous about like kind of the normal things like knowing when my baby wants to eat or if my baby's wet or if my baby's sick the, those kind of cues that I won't pick up on but every single one of my friends who has kids which is majority of them I think there's only like two or three of my friends who don't have kids have said to me you know your baby and you know what your baby wants and you will you'll just know I guess like my first time mum things are all like if I'm doing things wrong that's kind of like the only concerns I have but I'm sure every mother felt like that at the first time they had a baby decisions to have kids environmental impact versus wanting them I want them my partner is not sure because of the impact on the planet what I'm picking up from that is you want to have a baby and your partner says the earth is too overpopulated and no. First of all, how badly do you want children? That's kind of what I look at it. Like, is this gonna impact your mental health down the line? And if the answer to that is yes, then I would say the option for you only is to have children. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to give birth to them. You can adopt or foster. I know that they are very complicated kind of ways of introducing a child or having a child in your family. Because I know adoption takes an awful long time. There are so many boxes to be ticked there's so many things and options that you have to kind of weigh up before you go to adopt a child there's so many things in Ireland I think we can only adopt from six other countries China being one Russia being another and I'm not actually particularly sure of the rest of the countries I'm presuming Ireland is the other country we can adopt from since we are in Ireland but I know it can be a complex thing but it's definitely something to look into if you're telling me that you really want children you can't live without having children in your life maybe come to a compromise with your partner maybe is fostering an option for you do you have an awful lot of love to give there's so many unwanted children in the world and there's so many children out there that would love to you know be able to come and live in your home and maybe they would you know benefit them in so many different ways if the environment is a concern of yours and that's like your major major primary concern then I would say adoption or fostering would be your best option that's not to say that people who have kids out here are not thinking about the environment some people can't help the urge the overwhelming want and need for their own offspring and that's just that's okay as well like don't beat yourself up but maybe have a discussion with your partner and see what kind of compromise you can come up with like having a child is not really something that you should be taking lightly it's a human being it's not a toy it's forever it's not something that you should bring into a relationship that's unhappy not solid like anything like that like if you even feel like you're I'm not this is completely besides your point but I just feel like having a child is something that you should make sure that you're bringing it into as rounded and wholesome of a environment as possible and um, to make sure that your family unit as in you and your partner like are pretty strong like you want to just make sure that there's a, a team in it because it is teamwork I know lots of single mums who've done it alone I know some single dads and I know that they've done fantastic jobs so you just need to make sure that your values and his values and everything all lines up or you do decide to have a child or to adopt or to foster so there is other options especially if you're concerned about the planet thoughts on Invisalign this is from Cabinet Ruth I really enjoyed my Invisalign I still wear my retainer and stuff I think they did a great job was it a little bit longer than it should have been probably I could have gotten it done with train tracks in a much quicker time but um they're obviously not as appealing as an invisible 
retainer. A lot of people have asked this question, so I'm not going to ignore it. Initially, when I announced my pregnancy, it was kind of one of the things that kind of angered me the most, this question, because of the way it was phrased, but she's actually asking it in a very nice way, so I will answer it. I know it might be too personal, but can I ask, were you actively trying to conceive or did it happen naturally? I don't really understand what you mean by naturally or trying to conceive because I presume like if you're having sex, you're going to possibly get pregnant. You know what I mean? So that's naturally and trying to conceive. So I think what you mean is, was it a surprise or were we actively trying? I think the way it was worded before kind of came across really harsh. And some people had commented to me and said things like, oh my God, I can't believe you just went out and got pregnant. <laughs> like, I swear, like people have been, some people have been really horrible in my comment section. I say I've gotten maybe about 20 to 30 really shitty comments like that, like out of the thousands that I've gotten that have been lovely. I have gotten some questions like that and like, oh my God, you know, you're so irresponsible, blah, 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 blah. And I've never actually said, <laughs> like what the story was. Patty and I had decided that we were going to have a baby next year. We had decided that well before I even got pregnant. We had said that this year was gonna be our year for traveling. We were going to Krakow in Poland, Ziga Festival in Hungary. We were going to the Christmas markets this year. We were going to go to Greece or planned on going perhaps to Mexico or something like that to Cancun. And we had so many plans, so many plans. Obviously, COVID hit, everything went out the window and Patty and I had strongly discussed earlier in the year, I wanna even say like around February, that we were gonna do this this year and then next year we we're gonna have a baby. But we weren't actively trying this year, but we weren't clearly preventing. Like it wasn't a concern, like if I got pregnant, neither of us were worried because it's what we both wanted. It's just one of those things. If it's supposed to happen, it's supposed to happen. I know that she worded it very nicely, so I said I would answer that question. It's just one of those things. If you're supposed to get pregnant, you're supposed to. I was in a relationship for nine and a half years. I didn't even have so much as like a, a, a scare. I never took a pregnancy test in my entire life until I met body. It's so bizarre because I know my cycle and I know how to protect myself and I always used protection. Always. That's one thing I would say is very, very good advice to give is always use protection. Multiple forms of it because even if you're only using one, you can still get pregnant. A lot of people are asking about the house, moving house, stuff like this. Penny and I actually only had a discussion about this the other day. We were talking, I've talked about like the fact that we were gonna buy a house. We've already decided that again last year around Christmas time we said we were gonna buy a house so we were looking and saving like we saved our deposit this year houses in Dublin are ridiculously expensive I don't know if you guys have looked at the market in Dublin but they're ridiculously expensive you're talking about 450,000 to 550,000 for new bills and stuff they're very 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 expensive it's just one of those things but the other option we were looking into we only spoke about recently was building we never even it never even occurred to me he's an architect it never even occurred to me to build our own house so we are possibly looking into that route. Getting land should be fine because I live near somewhere where there's plenty of land and I live in that area so what did he say it's like a green list or something I don't know Paddy knows all the ins and outs of it and he knows so many people like that are tradey trade tradesmen trade worker you know like engineers and uh, builders and stuff so he's in that industry. Building a house may be a possibility. I'm gonna answer two more questions so the first one is will we be seeing pictures of the baby on insta and are you keeping him or her offline this is something that Patty and I haven't actually properly discussed in a way. I have kind of made my mind up that I don't, I know I hate, I hate to say this to you guys, but I don't really want my baby online. I am worried about the repercussions years down the line. I am taking away the baby's right to make that decision for themselves whether they want to be online or not because I'm kind of putting them online as it is. Also, I was with a blogger friend of mine about a year ago. She got a DM from a follower and it was a, of a picture of her mother and her child in the zoo. And somebody had sent it to her saying like, oh, I see your child and your mum are in the zoo. That terrifies me. I understand that it's just a subscriber. I know you guys are amazing. But at that point I was like, oh my God, I couldn't have my child up and know like that there was strangers watching. And I don't know, I'm just a bit kind of wary of stuff like that, especially because there's so many strange people on the internet. I'm not saying my followers per se, but I don't know. So I, Patty and I really need to sit down and have a strong discussion about that because I am aware that I do have a following. It worries me if my baby was out with my mum. You don't know what my mum looks like. And my baby's out with my mum. 
are people gonna recognize my baby? I recognized a blogger's children when I was away and I've never met that blogger's children and it just kind of scared me at that moment as well that I was like, I recognize her children. Like that's not normal. <laughs> Like, it's just not. You shouldn't be recognising people's children that you've never met. I just find it bizarre and I just don't know if I feel fully comfortable sharing my baby online. I will share, obviously, pictures of my baby and progression and talk to you guys about the baby. But including the face, I don't think so. The name, I, like, I don't really have much of a problem sharing that. Final question is, did you always want to be a mum? To answer that question, like, I didn't want to be a mum when I was a teenager. I was like, no, kids, don't interest me. In my early 20s, I was too busy partying and in college and stuff. I had no interest in children. In my mid-20s, I was establish establishing my business. I was working in a pharmacy as a self-employed nutritionist. I was way more interested in that than thinking about children. I think when I really, really started to think about children, I want to say about three years ago, but seriously, since I met Patty, realistically. When I was with my ex, I knew that, you know, if we we stayed together long enough that would happen eventually but can I say that I have an overwhelming want to have his children no and even looking back no way never whereas with Patty it was like I want to have your babies I love you so much like I just I want to spend the rest of my life with you and I want my children to have your DNA because he's the most wonderful person I've ever met and he's gonna probably see this and like get a big big head but he is and I was just like I want my children to have your genetics I want them just to be a part of you and a part of me that's how babies are made they're made from love and when you love somebody so much that's just how you how I felt no I didn't always want to be a mum your life changes, your circumstances changes. I'm definitely not one of those people who gushes over babies ever. I love my friends' kids, I love them. But even when I told some of my friends that I was pregnant, they were like, oh my God, like, I'm so happy for you, but I, I'm shocked at the same time because you're not, like, I wasn't really one of those people that was always going on about, oh, I really want a baby, babies, babies, babies. I never really kind of voiced that, uh, even to my closest, nearest and dearest friends. And they were just kind of like, wow, we didn't even know that you wa you were ready to have kids and that you wanted to have kids. And I was like, yeah, you know, realistically, the only person that should know that is my partner and I, nobody else, it's nobody else's business. I think I'm going to wrap that up, guys. Thank you so much for all your questions and this look, this makeup and me testing the foundation, everything should be coming up soon. I'm sorry this vlog is kind of all over the place. I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. I love you guys so much and I'll talk to you soon. Mwah. Bye.